Grr, readings, I'm Caffeine Rage, and welcome back to the Sunday Sampler. This week, we're taking a somewhat belated look at Shu, a adventure-style platformer self-published by CodeSync Games. Uh, before we jump into things, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the options, because I do have, uh, well, one praise and one bit of a gripe here. Uh, one thing I want to praise them for is the fact that you're able to select your default controller. I'm using my DS4 controller, but I have it running through DS4 Windows. So it looks like a 360 controller. And the fact that you can set your controller here is a nice little touch. But what I want to condemn them for is this. Okay, it not a lot of graphical options, but then again, this is a 2D platformer. So, you know, it's not exactly going to require a powerhouse of a PC, but the resolution options... You may notice something here. Okay, only a few options here, and I have checked. And it's not just because I'm running in full screen, or actually, technically, this is borderless window mode. It requires a 16 by 9 resolution. Uh, I'm assuming that's just, you know, how they uh, set up all the graphics, and it's just a different scaling. So, a little bit of commentation there, just because, you know, if... You don't want a 16 by 9 or you're not running a 16 by 9 monitor, which while it is, I'm pretty sure it's the standard, but, you know, there is ultra wide uh, screen. There's uh, uh, just different resolutions out there. You know, having uh, it for 16 by 9 is a bit of a detriment to the game, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and jump into the world map. This is a fairly short platform, right? There's only five worlds, each world having three levels, so 15 levels total. I'm going to play through the first world and just uh, uh, kind of just ramble on. Because there, uh, the first world really has everything that you need to see about the game, gameplay-wise, because this is a platformer. There's a, not, a lot to go on about. It's very Rayman-esque with its collectibles. You know, uh, hundreds of collectibles to uh, grab. And that uh, hourglass there is a time trial, which I'm not going to bother with right now. Uh, it does have time trial mode, of course, because uh, after completing a level. But the thing is that uh, there's not a lot of people playing it. So, oh, uh, there's another uh, problem I have with the game there. There's not a lot of people playing it, so, you know, if you're the type of person that wants to get on the top of the leaderboards, you know, this may be a good game for you, to be perfectly honest, but, uh, just, it's not going to be something that I think is going to be a huge selling point. And, uh, and we're right to a second problem I have with the game is, you notice that icon right there, that's telling me to use an ability. Now, I would have personally loved to seen this instead of having that icon, have the proper button prompt, because... Okay, first time I went through this level, I got to this point, and I had to just randomly guess buttons until I eventually gave up, and I went to settings, controller... Oh, gonna have to use the mouse here. And looked for those icons. These icons are not very conducive on just very quick, uh, well, uh, gameplay, which uh, it may look very casual and uh, slow paced uh, platformer, but there are sections of being chased, which we'll get to in a little bit. And having uh, something pop up like that just isn't conducive. It, it should have said left uh, button or right button, you know, that, the shoulder buttons, which is what that... Uh, is for the glide and I, well, I barely got my glide there, but you, know, you get the idea. It's just one of those things that is, it it's, feels like a amateur mistake and I know it feels very nitpicky for me to p point it out, but there's not a lot to talk about on a platformer. Uh, so it's all mechanic based really, unless there's something really going on with the, uh, the, theme or the art style, which the art style is nice. I will give it that much. There are a few times, which we'll encounter later on, that uh, it, the art style does kind of impact how you progress in the game. Which I think I'm getting close to one of those points now. 
It does have a very nice flow to the uh, movement. Well, whenever I'm not fucking things up. Where you're able to progress fairly uh, quickly. Okay, here's a good example of what I was talking about. You may notice that right here is my how I progress. But, uh, well, keep an eye on... Well, remember that, okay? Because over here is a second point where you're coming up from the bottom. So if you don't remember exactly what this uh, rock looks like, it is very easy to uh, not notice that this is your way forward. And that's just one example. I ran into a few of those. So that's going to be that. I ran into a few examples of where the foreground is apparent from the background. So you can't see exactly where you're going. And also, uh, well, getting uh, onto uh, progression and uh, gameplay. I uh, did notice a couple times that... Oh, damn. I messed up my jump there. That was completely on me. Uh, a couple times that the camera acts a little weird. Like the... Especially when you're running at full tilt or... Uh, later on when you have a... Uh, whenever you're riding a pig. Yes. Uh, it, you do eventually get partners in this game that uh, gives you special abilities. Uh, you're starting to outrun the camera to the point where... You're on the uh, uh, right-hand third of the screen instead of the left-hand third. So it makes it so uh, it's a lot easier to have blind jumps. Once again, a somewhat minor nitpick because, it, you know, it's one of those things that you just uh, well, stop and uh, let the camera reset. But it's one of those things that shouldn't happen in a platformer. So what is the purpose of this? What are we doing in this game? Well, you are a little, I think, owl boy trying to warn uh, the people to about an oncoming storm. Now, I will say that I think because the game isn't exactly forthcoming with its uh, with its story. And the only story bit I've gotten so far is the opening cutscene, which plays immediately after the game starts. And I couldn't record it just because of how the game renders it. Which is a little frustrating. Because it is a very pretty cutscene and I wanted to use it for my thumbnails, but I couldn't. <laughs> okay, this is one of those bits where you're being chased. This happens somewhat uh, frequently. This is, I've uh, played through... Um, oh. uh, I've played through, let's see, um, I'm going to say about seven or eight levels. Uh, actually, no, not seven or eight. Pro uh, probably about five or six now. I uh, really think about it because I'm still in the second world and it's three uh, levels per world. But the thing is that you get chased pretty damn often in this game. And there we go. Uh, thankfully, that one's uh, the easy one, but there are a few that requires you to use abilities right in the middle of everything, which uh, it can be very confusing on what they want you to do exactly. Just going to ignore the time trial again. Uh, let's see. Now, um, is there really anything else to talk about here? Because... This, uh, this is obviously going to be a more mechanics-driven uh, quick look because of uh, just the nature of the game. I will say that the music, it, it feels like it needs to be uh, normalized a little bit because well, the first level was you know nice and loud enough, but now it's really quiet. Uh, random collectible there. Thankfully, you don't have to get all five at once, and you can go back. Which is a nice little touch. Oh. Random spiky things that will kill you. You know, uh, like in every other uh, platformer game ever. Oh, the life system. I should talk about the life system. 
Well, and here, well, first of all, here's uh, your first companion that you get. And once again, it doesn't really show all that well what you need to do, but you jump up and press down and uh, jump again. And these uh, companions don't stick around all that long. I think you keep this one for two levels. And don't ask me how, you know, how they don't impact my flight at all. But the life system. Okay, you get five lives and they refresh after every checkpoint. Thankfully, the checkpoints are pretty generous, but it also makes so if you have trouble in a particular area, you will end up having to restart the level because, yeah, there's a couple areas that, oh, no. I, was, uh, I had to jump up there and not jump up down. There's a couple areas that are very finicky or require a very quick combination of moves, which can be a little bit frustrating to try to get. And, you know, since you only get five lives and you, and there's no way to build them up. I'm going to use the Mario example where if you have a sequence that you're uh, having trouble with, you can go back and build up your lives to try to, you know, get enough uh, lives to get through the sequence. Or even, you know, uh, just build up your lives in general. But the thing is that in this game, you know, it's always, oh, that's a new one that I never got. It's always five chances uh, to get to a checkpoint. Which, depending on your skill and what they're throwing at you in particular, can be a bit annoying. I'll be, uh, I'll be frank with that. Oh. Okay, there's my second ability, at least for now. In the second world, uh, you get a new pair of people, so. And the thing is that because you're swapping out your power so quickly, it feels like they don't really do anything interesting with the powers or they have to throw everything at once because yeah there's just not enough time to really do to do much um maybe it's just me of being overly critical of the game design i will say that it's not a bad platformer i've played far worse oh. Go ahead and just glide. I missed the very first one in the sequence and then I would have all the birds. I have no idea what the birds do. They don't exactly really tell you anything in this game now that I really think about it. I mean, the story is kind of obfuscated in a, just a cutscene. Uh, you're left really guessing on everything. Okay, let's see if the next level has enough, uh, audio. <laughs> nope. Once again, the music is a little on the low side. I may be rebouncing that in post. We'll see how, uh, proactive I am on that. Like I said, it's not a bad game. I'm a little concerned about the value just because uh, the developer said that if you uh, just play through the story or play through the levels once, you know, and what they called rush through it, you're looking at three to four hours for a, well, a $12 game, $11.99, which is a touch on the expensive side, to be perfectly honest. It's not exactly the greatest of value in gaming. <laughs> Which is disappointing because this isn't a bad looker, like I said. No idea what the purpose is up there, but yeah. And there's not really any alternate routes or anything. It's You'll get little sequences where you can go to, uh, one or two ways, but that's about it. Walked right into that one. Oh, and walked right into that one. Oh. 
Oh, got lucky there. Oh, unlucky there, though. But yeah, there's just... Oh, just a couple of these jumps feel very luck-based, you know? Just... Very Leap of Faith-ish. Okay, there's another one of the birds, which I already collected. But you see how my life's have uh, refilled back to the original five. Bounce, down, bounce. But it is a nice touch that whenever you die, you lose a bell on the uh, checkpoint. I just wish that there was more content here. Feels like a great advertiser for a game that could be more. Oh, here's another running section. Second one in this world. Oh, that's death. Okay, let's try this again. Got my lives back. Yeah, like right there. I was not going to get through that just because of the sequence. Ugh. And there we go. Have a little bit of a cutscene here. I have no idea what the hell is going on, to be perfectly honest. And then we lose our companions and they leave us alone because, you know, fuck you. We'll go ahead and finish off the level, then call it there. Oh, uh, my Yoshi like character. And this is where the camera starts to feel a little weird to me. Because you see how you're getting so far ahead on the uh, screen. Maybe it's just the, uh, this uh, guy is a little too fast for this game. Particularly with that dash move. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to show up again later or what. I've only played through uh, the first world and most of the second. Just to get my first impressions of the game. Particularly just because the game is so damn short. See how I'm slowly getting forward in the <laughs> screen? It makes it tell you that you have less and less reaction time. Oh, I gotta be careful with this. But is it just with this character? I've noticed it with a couple other uh, you know, configurations. we go in the level and in the world of actually and no idea what that is either <laughs> so let's just go ahead return to map and wrap things up
I think this is definitely a sale game, you know, wait for it to go on sale. I, I hate saying that uh, to a indie dev because you know, I do realize that, you know, every sale is very important to an indie dev, but yeah, there's not a lot of meat on the bones here. It is a lovely looking game. A very nice art style. Audio could probably use a little bit of normalization because, you know, some uh, audio tracks are a lot louder than others musical wise. Uh, the fact that it supports only 16 by 9 is a detriment. <laughs> Not a huge one, but it's one to be uh, aware of. I'm not 100% sure if it's just me with the camera or if, you know, or if other people have noticed it. Uh, hopefully I showed it off in the video well enough to let you see what I was talking about, though, because it does feel a little odd. And it took me a while to actually put my finger on what exactly was going on with it. Uh, and I think that it's all my notes. Uh, so let's go ahead and just say... As always, thank you for watching, and if you have any feedback, be sure to hit either the like or dislike buttons if you don't really have anything to say, but if you do, the comment section is there for a reason. <laughs> and subscribe if you want to see more of the Sunday Sampler, which is thankfully getting back on track, or my Let's Play content, or even the podcast, which comes out on Fridays. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll be sampling something new next week, but until then, I'll see ya.